because you're constantly limiting your potential if you're just feeding into those awful thoughts about yourself. Because Gotta admit, the kid has a point. You smell what I smell? That's some pure bullfit. What's up, motivators? Welcome back. It's Kevin. This is Pure Bull Fit, where we seek to demystify fitness, dispel the bovine fecal matter that fills the fitness industry, and to provide you with actionable information so you can live a longer, better quality life. Now, right away, I have to say I'm a fan of Serena Abway, her channel, uh, and her journey thus far, but I think this video actually gives us a very important thing to think about, a really key point we're going into this new year and we're thinking about everything that we're going to try to accomplish and it's not just applicable to her situation i think it applies to a lot of us and to compete because i literally felt like i was just i felt so weak weaker than i've ever felt so what to know about serena before we continue is that she is a very young power lifter who just started doing this a few years ago and originally utilized the sport to overcome an acute and aggressive eating disorder to take herself from a very very unhealthy state significantly underweight to a much more healthy weight with a healthy pursuit. And I think she's done a really great job of sharing her journey thus far and never presenting herself as some sort of subject matter expert, which she's not, she's young, but that doesn't mean she doesn't have really valuable things to add to the conversation. Unlike so many other people in the industry who don't know what the fuck they're talking about, who don't know their ass from a hole in the ground, Serena doesn't pretend to. She's actually kind of a goofy kid. <laughs> And I say kid, and I don't mean that in a demeaning way. I'm just literally old enough to be your father. She's really early on in her journey, and honestly, you don't need to be a subject matter expert to make a positive impact. Personally, I find her story and what she's done with her journey thus far really inspiring. She has had to battle with all of the things that everybody in life has to battle, in addition to dealing with depression, you know, something I can relate to, and an eating disorder, which you know I can't. But I see the effect that it's had on her life on her sense of self, her self-esteem, and how it impacted everything, and how she's really turned that around through the pursuit of powerlifting. As some folks in some communities like fat acceptance or fat positivity would like you to believe, the pursuit of exercise or strength sports is actually something that leads to eating disorders, as opposed to being a helpful mechanism that can help you conquer them. Serena stands as a perfect example of someone who has utilized strength training and the pursuit of a strength sport to overcome a significant issue. But she doesn't pretend that it's solved. Because I'm not gonna lie, like I still struggle. Like I still have a lot of those thoughts and I think that's the biggest thing is like realizing that you have those issues. And that's one of the things that I like about this kid the most. She's real. She talks about the things that are bothering her, that are slowing her down, that are keeping her from posting content. Obviously I can relate there. But she also is not afraid to be an absolute doof, goofy, silly, Person. So don't go to this channel expecting to learn the ins and outs of exercise physiology, any deep knowledge uh, on how to approach strength training. She's still figuring it out. And that is a really valuable part of influencers. One of the things that they can bring to the table is to show you what the journey actually looks like. I, I think that it can be a valuable tool. But the thing that she talks about here is the really important message. She's going in to her next powerlifting meet already knowing that she's gonna have problems. You guys know how open I am about body image issues and my body dysmorphia and honestly really terrifies me. Like seeing myself at this weight and always just struggling with body image issues and feeling like I'm constantly like fat or I feel like I'm a frail person and I just like, I don't really know my true perception of myself. And the fact that I still struggle with body image issues at this weight, I can only imagine that it's gonna get worse when I start moving up a weight class. She's thinking about the obstacles she's going to have ahead of time. Not just in some anxiety-inducing way that she's going to, you know, ruin her progress with, but she's actually thinking about it ahead of time so she can plan for it. Because honestly, if you're not thinking about the challenges that you're going to face, the, the disappointments or how to overcome them, you're not planning. You're just daydreaming. And daydreaming isn't going to net any progress, and you're not going to get any closer to your goals. And it's not just somebody who's dealing with body image issues that is gonna benefit from proactively thinking about the challenges that you're gonna face to prepare you for them. 
That goes for everybody. That goes for me. Right now, I'm training in a way that I do not enjoy. I don't like higher volume. But because I'm waiting to get my hernia surgery and I'm going to have to be very careful after that, this is the way that I have to train if I'm going to get to train at all. There's some folks out there who can still lift relatively heavy when they're dealing with an issue like mine. I am not one of those folks. If I strain too hard, doing anything. I've got a turtle head poking out. I think you get what I mean. So how is this useful to you with your goal? Well, if you're going to 2021 and you really want to lose a bunch of weight, you're going to face challenges. What if you don't know how to track calories? It's going to be really frustrating learning that process at first. Learning how to have a healthy relationship with food can be complicated, especially if you're doing it on your own. In addition to that, as you start to lose weight, if you have a bad night, a bad weekend, you know, how are you going to recover from that? Are you thinking about ahead of time, I know that eventually I'm going to fall off. How am I going to get back on the wagon? How am I going to pursue this goal again? Or am I going to throw my hands up in the air and just give up? If you have spent the entire winter bulking and you're looking at getting lean, but you've become really attached to those, uh, the weights that you've got on the bar, how strong you've become, and you watch those numbers go down, I promise you, you're going to start reconsidering how important it is to get a healthy body composition. You're going to start slowing down, maybe even reverse course. It happens to everybody, regardless of what your goal is. And if you don't go in with eyes wide open, thinking about how is this going to affect me? What do I need to do to make sure that I am resilient so that I can succeed? Then you are already setting yourself up for failure. And this out of a 20 year old kid. Now, if you've been watching this channel for a while, you already know that I'm a big dork. I love Goofy. It appeals to me. I don't think that we need to be serious, and I think we all take ourselves a little too serious in the fitness industry. None of us are that important. None of us. We may make positive changes in people's lives, but we're facilitators. We're not people you should follow unquestioningly. You should take a look at who they are and what they're doing. We should try to emulate the good and discard the bad. And that goes with everybody. That goes with this channel too. If what I have to say doesn't fit in well with what you're trying to do, it's as good as toilet paper. But the goal here will always be to provide you with actionable information so that you can live a better, longer life. That's what we're trying to do here. The rest of it is just to get people in, paying attention, to listen, the comedy, the dressing up like the Witcher and going to the gym, the roasts. It's all to help with engagement so that you can hear the important information that will actually help you. And I think that is very similar to what this young lady does. As far as I can tell from what I've seen so far, I don't see anything complicated or any red flags. Ah! Oh no. Actually, I don't care about Gymshark. Despite the fact that some of my colleagues and my friends have made content revolving around Gymshark and its problematic presence in the industry, I take a look at them as a company and don't think they're any more guilty than any of the rest of the big name brands out there. They're all guilty. They all use the best looking models and propagate stereotypes and unhealthy versions of self-image. They're all responsible for it, so I'm not going to single one out. Here we don't tend to focus so much on that minutia, which I don't find terribly relevant, and more on the bunk-ass information that some folks are putting out there about secret hacks and how to turn your body into a fat-burning machine with five secret foods and all of that nonsense. What I find incredibly more impactful than the brand of clothing that somebody is choosing to wear. Now, would I make that choice? Would I accept a sponsorship from Gymshark or any company like that? No, because I don't think they actually have people's health and wellness or well-being in mind. I think they're in it just to make money. And as far as business goes, that's fine. But I've turned down affiliate offers from people I actively admire and respect and whose products I regularly use. Omar Self reached out and offered an affiliate deal and I politely declined. I use the shoes because they're great. I wear the shirts because I love them. But I'm not going to crap on a kid for making a deal to get through college. It's not really relevant to the value that they bring to people's health and wellness. So I don't get caught up in that stuff. Otherwise, I think it's a great channel. Now, I don't know Serena personally, but you can tell from her content, she's been through some tough times. She's learned resilience through adversity. She's learned how to get control of her life and her self-image through weight training, through counseling, through a good support structure. These are the things that I support. This is why I think that there are some really valuable lessons to be learned from her content, no matter how silly it might get. <laughs> I I I I so, 
So if you're looking to be inspired, entertained, or maybe just watch somebody rise from the ashes of adversity and start to crush their life goals, I highly suggest checking out her channel. There's some real nuggets of wisdom scattered here and there. All it's really missing is a, I don't know, a Rocky quote. This competition was more of a way to test my mental capabilities rather than my strength capabilities, and I feel like we all need those times in our lives. Close enough. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. The absolute best part about this job is being able to help people no matter where they are with their goals. Through direct online coaching, using the Trainerize app, I'm able to deliver customized programming that changes as your needs do. Nutritional guidance, daily check-ins with the chat function, and we can even sit down and have face-to-face -face video chats should we need them. So if direct coaching is something that you need, or you just want to check out any of the other services that we provide, look us up at purebullfit.com and here at Trainerize.